This short video is essentially an update on the turn-based strategy project that I've been working on. As you can see in the screen right now, it looks a bit different than the final product. So what I've done is actually I've stripped the unnecessary, I guess, components from the finished game and I've turned it into a GitHub repository. So this entire project can be found on my GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description in this video and the previous video. And in this video, I'll be covering what you need to do to essentially change it to make it your own. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the game manager system. And if you see like a lot of gizmos here, you can just untick this. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Once you load into the project, you probably won't see the scene. So just go to assets and then scenes and then click on the double click on the first level and it'll bring you here. So essentially the game manager script has everything. And you can see here, there's tile map script on the right side. And essentially the tiles, once I hit play, you're gonna see that the tiles are built. And one more additional thing, I removed the RTS camera. You can just grab it back from the asset store. I just didn't want to include it because it wasn't really mine and it's not my work. I just edited it a bit, but you could find it on the asset store if you just look for RTS camera. So once you hit play, the game manager finds these tiles and then it populates the map with them. And all the document, all the C sharp scripts are fairly well documented, I'd say. So if you just want to see how it works, just go in there. There's a few descriptions for every function and inside some of the more complicated functions. There's a bit, there's a bit of description of what they do as well as you can just watch my previous video to see like the actual logic behind certain things. So if we go back to our game manager, tiles, types, and the size of tiles. So let's say we have four different tiles in our game and you can see them all here. There's forest, mountain, grass. We just open them up. You can see that there's a name. There's a visual prefab that goes with it. There's unit on tile, which is, I should probably make this private because it shouldn't show up here and some other information as well. I should probably change this at some other time, but not, not for now. So essentially this tile of prefab is tile visual prefab is here. So once you click on these, you could see that they all just have a box collider. They're all one by one and they all have the clickable tile script with a bit of information on them. And essentially these tiles are the tiles that you see in game. So you can see the tile mountain, it just looks a bit different because I just stacked two on top of each other. And when I hit play, you can sort of see like they're sort of jutting out from the floor. So that's sort of the little cheat I did for that. And once you get their prefab down, you just have to put it into the game manager and it populates the information properly. And also, so you see tile dirt is, I guess the zeroth index of the list. So all you need to do is when you go to the tile map script, on the generate, I think visual prefabs or whatever, or ge generate map data, you just have a zero in a specific X, Y coordinate to create that tile. Uh, you'll, you'll see it when you look through. So that's that. All you have to do is just set that and change that up to whatever type of tiles that you want in your game. And the next thing we're going to talk about is the units on board. So I have two units right now. And the really important thing to do is obviously put them on different teams. And if you do put them on different teams, on the right, you can see here, there's a team number. Uh, I can't really highlight it because it's not picking up my mouse, unfortunately. But there's a team number, it says zero. And then on the next one, the team number says one. So please make sure that they are on different teams or else you won't be able to hit each other. And another thing is when you put a unit into the game, you transform the X and Z position. Please make sure these are full numbers and like not negative or off the map or anything because that's probably gonna cause some problems. And you wanna make sure that these are full numbers. So if I wanted this unit to be on zero, zero, I would do zero, zero, and not like 0 0.75, 0 0.1 or something. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't matter that much. And essentially it makes sure that it is on this tile. And then, yeah, uh, probably have to change the camera as well at some point. So there's that and that's about it. So if you want to add an extra unit, you can just see how units are built. It's essentially prefab where if we open it up, there is the actual object itself with all the numbers and important stuff like team number, XY coordinate, and a bunch of other stuff, attack damage range, all that stuff. And it has all these components for UI and all these components are essentially just the HP bar and everything else. And you can see, you can just follow the sort of way every unit is built and then just add on your own things. Just change the numbers a bit, change the actual image itself. So I think the 2D model has the actual sprite render on it. So you just change that. And then the difference between these two units is just that the one on the second team has its X coordinate or not X coordinate, rather it's X, I guess, appearance, um, just flipped on the X axis. So it looks like it's on a different team. 
And yeah, that's about it. So you can just download the entire project on my GitHub repository and just go check it out. And you can add on whatever you want to add on to essentially implement whatever functions you want in your game. All right, thanks.